Malaysia willing to learn and work with any countries. New subject package options for Form 4 and 5 students beginning next year. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here on News on 2. Now, Malaysia is willing to learn and work with any countries that can benefit the nation. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mate Mahmoud said there is no question whether Malaysia ignores certain countries. In the case of South Korea, the Premier said the country is very forthcoming and very keen to work with ASEAN. Tun Dr. Mate added that the Korean mindset is also different as they use technologies to focus on improving life, not as weapons. He described the meeting and cooperation with South Korea as useful for Malaysia, adding that the country is interested in helping small companies and prepared to transfer technologies. Their technology can be used some in small companies, like agriculture, for example. Uh, it is possible on a small piece of one acre of land, you can grow uh, using this modern technology and make, make money out of even one acre of land, because they have the technology. He said this after concluding the ASEAN South Korea Commemorative Summit in Busan, South Korea. Now, the Premier was also of the opinion that the region should practice trade without borders. Malaysia, nevertheless, he said, should take steps to protect its new industry. Uh, for trade, I think it's very good, but um, uh, we feel that uh, we need to be a little bit protective of our own uh, infant industries. And we also must uh, be uh, careful about uh, the kind of technologies that we want to acquire because uh, technologies uh, is available to everybody but you must have the idea of how to make use of the technology you see uh, like alibaba for example they make use of uh, ai and suddenly they became very big. Tun Dr. Mate further noted that the ASEAN South Korea Commemorative Summit have achieved its objective. Now on the sideline of the summit, Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mate Mohamad also visited Hyundai Rotom in Changwon, during which he was given updates on works done by the company on the MRT2 project as well as electric train coaches for KTMB. The company has successfully delivered many rolling stocks for Metro Rail, National Rail and High Speed Rail. Hyundai Rotem's Vice Chairman Dr. Yu Chol Wu, who received Tun Dr. Mate on arrival, also showcased to the Prime Minister its latest real technologies, specifically its ongoing R&D in the hydrogen powertrain. The company is the largest rolling stock manufacturer in South Korea, with exports to 36 countries all over the world. Spending about two hours touring the facility, the Prime Minister also test drive the Hyundai Nexo, a hydrogen fuel cell-powered crossover sport utility vehicle SUV. Besides that, he also witnessed the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, between Malaysia's Sapura Group and Hyundai Rotem to collaborate in rail-related technologies. Sapura Group Chief Operating Officer Datuk Muhammad Zarif Hashim said the idea is for Sapura to work together in electronics and rail system rails so that the technology can be transferred to Malaysia. Sapura has in fact identified an area in Mentakap where the intersection between KTMB and ECRL rail track for the facility. Now, Dewan Bahasa dan Pustaka, DBP, is proposing to establish the Academy Sastrawan Harapan as a platform to produce more literary talents. Education Minister Dr. Mazli Malik said the effort to establish the Academy could be carried out with the assistance of talented writers guided or coached by national laureates. Further, Dr. Mazli said the academy should start with intakes from primary school, secondary school, up to universities. Bagaimana sedari awal anak-anak ini 
akan dibawa untuk berguru dengan sasrawan-sasrawan negara kita supaya membina mereka punya bakat uh, yang di, diajarkan oleh para sasrawan negara sendiri. Dan kita dapat persetujuan daripada pengurusi Dewan Bahasa sendiri. Beliau sendiri akan memantaunya secara peribadi dan kan? <laughs> dan menjadi pemilik kepada projek yang besar ini yang kita berharap akan mengubah lanskap sastra negara kita di masa akan datang. The minister said this at the presentation of the Malaysia Premier Literary Award HSPM and Hadia Sastra Tunas Cipta 2017-2018. In addition, starting next year, Dr. Mazli said the ministry would also ensure that government schools will create a national literary corner to cultivate love for literature. Now, starting from next year, the Education Ministry will introduce new subject package options for the Form 4 and 5 students. The secondary school curriculum will be introduced following the abolition of science and art streams for Form 4 and 5 next year. The packages are designed to meet tertiary education entry requirements and a student's preferred career path. According to Deputy Director General of Education, Dr. Habiba Abdul Rahim, these subject packages will cater to students' interests and capabilities. However, she said the students will still have to study three subject areas, namely core subjects, compulsory subjects, and elective subjects. The core subjects are Bahasa Melayu, English, History, Mathematics, Science, and Islamic Studies, or Moral, while the compulsory subject in the Physical and Health Education. As for the elective subjects, includes physics, chemistry, biology, additional mathematics, and so on. The students will have to take core and compulsory subjects, while elective subjects are optional. Pakej ini uh, adalah digubal berdasarkan pilihan-pilihan uh, dan ke, uh, keperluan untuk memenuhi kriteria-kriteria uh, tertentu untuk melanjutkan pelajaran ataupun kerjaya. She disclosed this during a briefing on the new subject package options for Form 4 students in Kuala Lumpur. The PKR President and Secretary General does not have the power to amend the decision of the Central Leadership Council, MPP, to expel two party members last Saturday. Its Secretary General, Datuk Sri Saifuddin Nasution Ismail, said statements claiming that he and party president, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, could review the decision was wrong because the party constitution does not authorize them to do so. Dalam pelembagaan parti, seorang yang dipecat, dia boleh mengemukakan rayuan dalam satu tempoh masa. Rayuannya akan diteliti balik oleh panel rayuan parti. Itu prosesnya. There is no such thing as President and Setius Agung mempunyai kuasa untuk mengubah. No such thing. Tak ada. He also said the question of annulling the expulsion did not arise although the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, admitted that it had erred in sending a letter to PKR recommending disciplinary action against the two. Datuk Sri Saifuddin added that the sending of the letter may have been a procedural error, but it did not change the facts of the case and MACC's view that there were wrongdoings on the part of the two members. Police believe they have solved several cases of copper robbery cases around the Perai industrial area with the arrest of a man and his nephew, aged 37 and 30 respectively, at their house in Kebun Sirih, Bukit Matajam last Friday. Following the arrests, police then managed to nab three others, including a Myanmar national, believed to be involved in the gang of copper robbers. Pulau Pinang CID Chief Dato Zainul Sama said police acted after receiving information from a factory of a robbery at midnight on the 17th of November, which involved tens of thousands of ringgit in losses. Pet ngami golongan tembaga dari dalam kilang seberat lebih kurang 2,000 kilogram, itu dua tan. Lebih kurang 20 minit kemudian suspek telah melarikan diri. Bersama-sama dengan barangan milik kilang, jumlah kerugian lebih kurang ringgit Malaysia tujuh puluh ribu. Preliminary investigation revealed that the 37-year-old man was a technician at the factory and had acted as the mastermind behind the robbery. All five are remanded for seven days since last Saturday. The case is investigated under Section 395 or 397 of the Penal Code for Armed Robbery. 
The Kuala Lumpur High Court has fixed this Friday to decide whether Malacca's Gade State Assemblyman detained under the Security Offences Special Measures Act 2012 SOSMA for his alleged involvement with the LTTE terror group is allowed bail or otherwise. G. Saminathan, 34, who was charged with supporting and possessing items related to the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam LTTE terror group, was remanded at the Sungai Bulo prison under SOSMA. Judge Mohan Nazla Mohan Ghazali heard submissions from Counsel Ramkapal Singh representing Saminathan and Deputy Public Prosecutor Mohamed Iskanda Ahmad in the proceedings which began at 4.30pm and ended at 8pm yesterday. Earlier, Ramkapal argued that the judiciary had the power to grant or deny the bail application and the execution body could not interfere in the matter. The lawyer said they accepted that it was not an easy matter for the court to grant bail but to deny his client's rights to obtain bail was unreasonable. On the 1st of November, Sessions Court Judge Rosina Ayub ruled that there was merit in the application made by the defence under Section 13, Subsection 2 of SOSMA to refer constitutional matters concerning bail to the High Court. The court allowed at the application of Saminathan and 11 other men to refer constitutional issues on bail to the High Court. They were charged in separate sessions Courts in Kuala Lumpur and several states on the 29th and 31st of October with allegedly having links with LTTE. Now, Kumpulan Prasarana Malaysia Berhad handled 1.4 million riderships each day this year through its transport services throughout the country. The figure is an increase over the 900,000 riderships for the service in 2018. Our President and Chief Executive Officer Datuk Mohamad Hazlan Mohamad Hussein said besides changing the face of public transportation in the country, the company had spearheaded a new lifestyle for city folks by promoting transit-oriented development. He added the introduction of My50 and My100 monthly pass initiative have also been a key factor to the increased number of ridership. Dan kalau kita tengok pertambahan daripada segi MRT lah. MRT was under capacity sebelum ni, tetapi dengan ada My 100 peningkatan telah bertambah selama 30 peratus. Begitu juga dengan BRT. BRT Sunway kita telah meningkatkan juga sebanyak 40 peratus. Speaking at Media Appreciation Program, Datuk Mohamad Hazlan said Prasarana would undertake various new initiatives to enhance the existing services. The government is maintaining its projection of 4.7% gross domestic product GDP growth for 2019 despite the weaker third quarter performance and external headwinds. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng said the annual growth would be supported by expansion in the fourth quarter, usually the strongest quarter of the year. Only the fourth quarter is a, is a stronger quarter. So I think uh, we feel that the the uh, the economy will be able to uh, show a better performance so that we can stick to our original estimate of 4.7 percent he was met after launching the Securities Commission Malaysia's Sustainable and Responsible Investment Roadmap for the Malaysian Capital Market in Kuala Lumpur. On the 15th of November, Bank Negara Malaysia announced that the country's GDP grew by 4.4% in the third quarter this year, which was slower than 4.9% growth recorded in the second quarter. The economy currently has registered an average growth of 4.6% in the first nine months of this year. There's only three days left to the official opening of the 2019 SEA Games in the Philippines. And workers are still busy putting on the final touches, especially on the media center at the International Media and Broadcasting Center in Clark. Despite all the controversies surrounding the bad planning and late construction of the center, like it or not, international media teams, including RTM, need to move in on time for the opening until the closing day on the 13th of December. Clark, which is situated more than 90 kilometers from Manila, has been officially appointed as the media host city for the 30th SEA Games. The International Media and Broadcasting Center will be based in the ASEAN Convention Center in Clark Freeport Zone, Rampanga, Philippines. All the events for this edition of the Games will be held at various locations, including in Manila, Clark, Subic, covering 43 venues. 
15 venues are located in Manila, 11 in Clark, 9 in Subic and 8 others in the southern Luzon region and others. Among the events to be held in Clark are swimming, diving, athletics, archery, shooting, rugby and softball. RTM's crew covering the games have already arrived at Clark yesterday and we promise to bring the best coverage possible, especially events involving Malaysian athletes right here on RTM. Now onto the game of netball, Malaysia is on track to defend the SEA Games netball title after whipping hosts Philippines 88-25 in the preliminary round yesterday. Despite playing in front of the vociferous home crowd at the Santa Rosa Sports Complex Laguna in Manila, the girls showed their class and prowess as the defending champions to chalk a big margin victory. The two times champions started strong by leading 23-7 in the first quarter before the hosts tried to reduce the margin at the beginning of the second 15 minutes but Malaysia regained momentum to lead 44-15. Having the height advantage over the host country players, Malaysia then increased the score to secure their second win after defeating Thailand 62-42 in the first match on Monday. The country's first netballer to play in the foreign league with Australian club Greater Western Sydney Fury and Najwa Azizan admitted yesterday's outing was far better than Monday's. That concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. A reminder of our top story, Malaysia, willing to learn and work with any countries. We'll be back again at 7 this evening for more updates on happenings around the world. Till then, I'm Brendan Lipal. Have a great afternoon. Thanks for watching.